everyone, and welcome back to the Dog Show Drive with Wayne and Will. I'm Wayne Kavner. Oh, and I'm Will Alexander. Fresh haircut, Wayne. Look at that. You're looking tight there, Will. Right to the tight. wood. <laughs> right to the wood. <laughs> right. This week, we're going to talk about old friends. New ways to keep people in the sport. It's not a problem of just attracting them. It's an issue of keeping them. A little bit of hockey, a little bit of current events, all that and more. Right here, Will. Right here on the Dog Show Drive. Good morning, young William. It's a fine day here in Kalamawat. Kalamawat, Kalamazoo. Well, I'm here in Milton, Ontario, and it's bright and sunny. It's not even that cold out. It was cold last night, but it's not that cold out now. Uh, we have had I'm having a bit of a, 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 a not a meltdown. I'm having a bit of a withdrawal because my team, Toronto Maple Leafs, are in Sweden right now. Yeah, and they're playing a. Uh, are playing four teams went over to Sweden to do this little Swedish tour. I don't know, so the NHL can say they've done it, but um, they don't play. They they play two games in ten days or something like that. It's ridiculous. I don't know. I watched Philadelphia and Carolina last night. <laughs> well, Carolina's fun to watch. Actually, that's a good. That's a good one. Well, Philadelphia, I the Philadelphia ended up winning. I fell asleep. But... I got to turn off the fireplace. Well, it's a little toasty in here. It just takes a button. That's the modern technology we have right. right here in the main office, the Kalamazoo office. Here in the office. home offices in Kalamazoo. It's Kalamazoo. Yes, I am. Anyway, yeah, it's it's been um, – I haven't gotten to watch as much hockey as I want, but I do love to watch Connor Bedard because that's just pff, crazy stuff. Yeah, and now he's doing things that – he was predicted to have to get like have a good season at 30 goals. Well, he's at nine goals already. I think he's going to have a 30 plus goal season. So, and it's not just the goals. I mean, he just controls the ice. He sees things no one sees ahead of time. Uh, his release, he's, he can, he just doesn't even like drag it and wind up. It just leaves the puck. It's crazy to watch. And, and, and they, they all, because of his size, they're all like, oh, one got hit and he's going to be able to try hitting him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Try to <laughs> That's like Marty saying, Louis, you try finding him. Try hitting him. <laughs> yeah. He just kind of Marty. like mold. I, 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 Kulak was it Kulak that hit him the last night, like, a few games ago, and he hit him and he hit him good, but the kid just sort of like molded into the boards and then mm -hmm. and skated away. <laughs> yeah. and like, you know, watching Mario San Luis those years, and uh, I was it you that I got to bring in the locker room and see more or Jim Edwards, probably Jim. No, we went to uh, we saw we watched Tampa play basketball in the underground garage. Oh, that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not a tall guy at all, he's. No. One of the shortest in the NHL, but he was so fast and so fit that you just couldn't catch him to hit him. I had incredible his, uh, I, I, his mother in law has Irish centers. And See, I knew he could do it, Will. Yeah, I knew he could wrap it by. Yeah, she, yeah. She's told me that she would have an in with me because of her son in law. And she said on his card, it says he's five foot ten. But in real life, she said he's shorter than I am. <laughs> he's he he's lucky to be five 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 six. Well, I don't. Yeah, I think he's about five six five six. Yeah, right yeah. somewhere. But his his legs are tr tree trunks from yeah. another planet. Yeah, he's so I'm sure this is fascinating all of you out there. <laughs> but the Irish setter thing got in there. We got it in there. Part we of tied the show. It up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like uh, Prairie Home Companion when Garrison Kill used to go off on a tangent and then come back and wrap it right in. Well. You are you're Garrison Keeler today. You got yeah. you got it. Go. You got it. The haircut. Anyway, busy week last week, eh? I mean, we were all over the place. Yeah, you you were in Kalamazoo, and I love those shows. Oh man, they're great shows. Big entries, you know. I think it was fourteen, fifteen hundred on Saturday. Um, it falls off on Monday, of course, but it wasn't just the entry. I mean, the quality in those groups was unbelievable. I mean, just unbelievable. The dogs that were there competing at the end of the day. I mean, there were dogs in the groups that I'd never seen before that I would have tried to use if I could, but no room at the end. You know, just good ones. Now, what were you judging there? I wasn't. Oh, you um, weren't. <laughs> this is, I mean, I judge there often, so this is a year off. Um, but I went over there to observe uh, with Ann Savory. Uh, oh, both. Ann Savory. Yeah. Well, and we can I talk about her all Ann day. Yeah. It was wonderful. But anyway, while I was there, you know how... Yeah, you, you, whippersnappers wouldn't get this, but, but the people who've been around, they, <laughs> the people who've been around, know that uh, there was a time in history, and it still may be true, when you went to certain restaurants, 
if you didn't have a sport coat, you couldn't get in. Right. So they would keep a blue, a navy blue blazer in the closet, regardless of what size it was. You had to wear it because it was the thing you could just grab off the shelf and anyone, and they would qualify to come in wearing a blue blazer. I'm the blue blazer at the Kalamazoo shows. Well, that's what I am. So when I walk in there, they just pick me off the shelf and say, can you do the bread by groups? Can you, oh, and then later on, can you do the bread by best in show? Can you do, not a problem. So I wore a tie the first day because I had to observe and you have to, you know, wear a jacket tie. That worked out well. I didn't do that the rest of the week well because I don't want to get pulled off the shelf. I want to watch. Yeah. Uh, but it was a great time. And the bread by group, oh my gosh, the bread by best in show was, I mean, it was unbelievable. I had a Whippet, a Golden, and a Bulldog bitch. That all of them were phenomenal. So, yeah, really good to see. And, yes, the Bulldog was my best in show winner, oh. which um, she was absolutely gorgeous. Right tail set. Right, I mean, she was beautiful. So, anyway, all that and an entry of 1,400, 1,500. But the highlight for me was seeing my dear friend Anne, Anne Bolas and David, her husband. Um, gosh, it's been too long. I just, yeah, I just love her. I just love her. Uh, she's just the best. It was so good to see her. And we had time to sit in the lunchroom and chat. And, um, we, well, I don't even know if I can go there, but we took a picture together for a friend of ours who's, uh, having a rough time now. Uh, our friend Terry, who we both absolutely adore and owe our life to in many ways. Anyway, um, hmm. It was great to see her, and um, our thoughts are with Terry Stacy and Jackie Stacy as they go through some tough times. And Anne and Terry and I go back when she came over from England. I think it was a long, long time ago. Wow! Um, so it's been it was great to catch up with her and others. You know, we had it. We had it was great. Um, Jason Hill came in for Sunday and did, and did sight hounds, and I loved and sight and sight hounds. I loved, I just sat there at ringside and watched. Uh, I don't get to do that. And after I did the bread by group and the best thing, the next day I could get my catalog because you couldn't have a catalog if you're judging, right? So I could sit at ringside with a catalog and look at what I like to look at, sires and dams, breeding kennels. You don't get the chance to do that much. Um, you're at a show to work um, and it was great. I really enjoyed it. So we had a good time and it was fun seeing good breed entries as well. Yeah, Not quite the Fort Wayne level, which was off the charts the week before, but pretty close. Pretty close. Well, I, would have, I would have loved to have seen Anne. I would have, I would have traveled just to see Anne. Yeah. She's one of my very world. favorites. You know, I've known her since world. I was a little kid. She used, to, she used to show dogs up here on a very famous Irish setter from the seventies. She yeah. and her husband bred it at that point. Yeah. Her, yeah. And, uh, the Dunholm Kennels. Dunholm Finn McCool was a top sporting yeah. dog in Canada for like three yeah. years in a row. Was he really? Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah, Finny. Man, she's just, she, it was just so good. She looks great. Did a great job. Yeah. And I got to observe, um, what did I observe with her? Um, Something quite important, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what did we have a good entry of? Oh, I forget. I did a few that weekend, so they're kind of run together. But um, yeah, it was great fun. And oh, Tollers. It was Tollers. And oh. coming, and I was just back from the National uh, two weeks or three weeks before, which was great because I had all that template in my head and questions, and it was wonderful to go over them with Ann. Well, now you can easily apply it, right? So. Oh, yeah, to do that. it was perfect. Yeah. And that's the thing about observing that, I'm sorry, apprenticing. Uh, the terms change as the programs change. Apprenticing is is an interesting term, but I like it. And you are the apprentice in there learning from someone who's judged the breed for a long time. And in this case, 20 years for Ann. So uh, the one thing that really hits you is the confidence it gives you right? Sometimes you're in there and you're like, I'm not learning anything. I might even know more than they do on this particular topic. Um, but it gives you confidence. So when you do walk in the ring to hand out the actual ribbons, you've already been in the ring with them. Right. And you walk, because it's easy to sit outside and go, yeah, I know that. Pretty. When you get in there and see a group of them, if oh, you understand what's exactly. going on, you're confident that... Uh, I was yeah. actually watching Tollers this weekend and I was in a show in Lindsay. 
and uh, there was one dog in there. Its markings went quite high on its legs, mm-hmm. and for the life of me, I couldn't remember how high they accepted it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I'm I am licensed for it. I had to go look it up to make sure I know. And I'm, and Chris was there. Chris with the tollers. Christine. Oh, she's got great ones. Chris Jones. Yeah. Christine Jones. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so I spoke with her too. And she she said that it's acceptable. She said it's just not something she would continuously breed to because it's hard to get rid of. So yeah. And you would also get in in my experience with other breeds, those white markings keep creeping, and then you get a neck shawl and things like that. Yeah. that you know, well, you can't get it can't go on to the back. You can stay on the front and on the right. on the feet and tail and whatnot but she said even even the ones that are acceptable she said she tries to stay away from because it's hard to get rid of no matter how good they are it's hard to get rid of them so you know one of the things that um i don't know all exhibitors understand uh why but when judges go back and check the breed standard at their table that's a good thing yeah we can't remember 200 disqualifications or 200. And sometimes you get out there, and I hate to say, you're, you're so focused, and all of a sudden this th- just jumps in your face and they go, oh, there's something about that. I better check it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Or or it's a dog that has something that's so unusual that you've never seen before and never will again, some particular feature that you're like, are they supposed to have that? And you go, check. you know the good ones, you know, but you see a fault that looks very foreign to you, and you need to go check. So yeah, I sure. have no problem with people checking. And now we keep them on iPads or I use my phone usually. Yeah, I do too. I have a um, thing in my phone. So I carry that big book to look good. You know, the binder they give you. Well, they don't give you, they sell it to you. They course. sell it to you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> $35 for the binder to put the $30 standards in it. They say it for um yeah. and now our Canadian one, like yours. Here's 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 yours, right? So it's a normal yeah. size one, and our old one was exactly the same size. Our new one now is double the size. So I don't know what they want us to carry it in. They want us to start pulling a dolly behind us. <laughs> <laughs> you look like the fourth grader with the backpack going to school. <laughs> <laughs> Book. I'm sorry, with a backpack bigger than themselves. That's beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. But I had a great time there, and. and you know, it's a cluster that really makes it happen. You know, it's oh, five I days. Enjoy the Kalamazoo shows. And it's not just one person. It's a whole team. And they really do a phenomenal job. Little things like they always have the, they have a junior showmanship competition that goes all week. And then there's a final and there's a scholarship. Or something. I, I did it last year. And um, it's the top junior handler for the weekend, which is, I believe it's a thousand bucks or something. It's not yeah. minor. Wow. And the kids are great. And then they have the handlers do handling classes right in the ring. They set a ring aside for the kids. Um, they did peewees, which was terrific. So the kids that aren't old enough to compete can come in the ring with an adult, if it's a big dog or without, doesn't matter. And some of the kids were just adorable, four or five-year-old kids with a big smile running around with cowboy boots or whatever it might be. Uh, <laughs> it was terrific. And the people just applaud. And that's how you that's how you do it. You know, that's how you do it. Um, yeah, it's, it's all, and now they, they changed it. So they had the, the two end buildings. One used to be agility. They have, they have rings in there for the toy breeds now. So agility and um, some of the other performance events are in the barns, which are not too far from the building at all, which gives them privacy and more space. And no one's complaining about the noise between, you know, with rally screaming and you're upsetting my dogs. Fail, you, you failed the temperament test. Sorry. Anyway, um, it's very well laid out, plenty of room for grooming. And I saw a dog, Will. I saw a dog. And I uh I I I don't think it's gonna be around. I think it's going elsewhere. But I can tell you that it's a Welsh Terrier puppy and eight months old and by end. It just remember we always look for that dog, right? Yeah, yeah, the dog of the weekend. Yeah. Just standing there, on waiting to go in the ring, and I walked up and immediately, <laughs> it was just beautiful and put down to perfection too. Um, easily won the breed from the classes, uh, and I it'll be a fun one to watch for the future. I'm looking forward to Montgomery next year to see what he looks like, but um, a beauty. And there's some there's some real nice quality and you know in a lot of classes, the bred by groups, as I said. The owner handler groups. Some of those groups are very competitive now. The owner handler groups. Speaking of them, 
I'm a bit concerned. Well, oh, the question of the week for dog news, I think last week or something, was something like, should a dog be able to compete in the owner handler group if it has previously won a regular group? Um, what do you feel about that? Uh, I never thought about that, but um, I don't think there's an issue with that. They're still the owner handler. Why? Why? Like, I, does that mean that they're changing ranks now? They're moving up to the, the pro level because they won a group in their not in their first level. I don't think so. I, that's a hard call. But I, I think um, that's what they want to do. They enjoy their owner handler competition, and if they do well in the regular show, that's great. You know, they, they, I'm sure it's, that's happened quite a bit, though. Are you penalized for having a good dog? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and getting good. Like, it's, it's, that's, we want everybody to progress and move on and get, get, mm -hmm. be more competitive. And now they become more competitive and they, I don't know, a tough call. I think I'm more, and I get it that they want it to be more for amateurs that are learning, but you could be. And by the way, what if you won that group at that 176 dog show last weekend with 20 sporting dogs? What if you won that group? Or some of the terrier groups with six dogs entered? What if you won that right. group? You know, so winning group isn't always like winning a group, right? Um, you get the same color ribbon and the same number of group wins, but yeah, it's a slippery slope. The thing I'm more concerned about is judges with four and five groups showing their dog in the group than the owner handler group. They're the owner handler. I get it. But um, yeah, that just seems... That just seems like, uh, I don't know. I had it happen to me. I had a five-group judge show a dog to me, and I thought, man, it never dawned on me until that happened. Then I went, man, is this fair? Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, should they be there at that point? I, yeah, uh, that's yeah. tough because I uh, I interviewed Michael Cantalizo this week, and we talked about still showing your own dogs, and he, he agreed with me about because it's good at keeping things in perspective. It keeps your competition in perspective, keeps you in the know of things as well. But at that level, like, I can you imagine Michael walking into the owner and the group, right? Exactly. He could, you know? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And there's plenty of other people, too. Uh, David Fitzpatrick could, right? Yeah. Well, he's even breeder owner handler. Uh, so, yeah, you have to keep, I guess it's a personal choice and a call. But right. I wanted to get there because I really, the more I think about, we spoke about last week about the expensive grooming spaces that were available in Doswell, which were in the premium list and published. And I have no problem with that. But the point is the more I talk to owner handlers and I try to do as much as that as possible this weekend, you know, the entries fall off really big on Monday. They're Thursday, Friday, decent. Then it goes up like 500 dogs on Saturday and Sunday and then back down. They just can't afford it. Will. And like, oh, that's a we long talk time to take so off of work or already pay out those kind of expenses. Yeah. And it, we talk about where are we going to get new people and how are we going to attract new people to the sport? The more I think about it, I'm more concerned with how are we going to keep people in the sport? There's a lot of people competing in these owner handling groups. They're coming, they're entered. They're not necessarily, they need their own group because they're competing against top campaigned um dogs with handlers mm. and that's okay they just want to finish their dog and get a grand on it maybe i don't know mm. but is it worth the 10 grand it's going to cost you because right. between entry fees and gas and hotels and clusters where you're entered many days of the week um and the grooming spots if you have to pay for one parking uh meals it's it's easy going to be a thousand dollar weekend or more to go to two shows with your class dog. No, oh, for and, sure. And if you need 15 points and that's going to take you 25 shows or whatever it might take you, is it worth 18, 20 grand? And they just, and I've heard this back. I've, I keep hearing this. If we go to local shows only so we can save on money and we just try to finish them and that's it. Uh, you know, you'll see the entries two, one, two, and then in specials, um, you know, two, one, two, one, dogs and bitches, whatever in, in the class. And then you get to specials and there's eight of them and they all have a campaign and a handler and a, you know, the whole thing. 
it makes it discouraging for them. And, and I think the expense is and it's something private. People don't tell you, I can't afford to do this. Or I'm really setting my credit cards on fire just to show this dog. And I don't know. I don't know and how these you- the lengths people will go to show their dogs. And they hear stories about people refinancing things to show their dogs, which mm-hmm. is incredible. I, I think I, I, got, I know I did. I got a lot of business as a handler because people would come to me and say, well, it's, it's just cheaper just to use you. It is. It yeah. is. Because you're not, you know, you're sharing those expenses. And if yeah. you're one person with one dog and, and two hotel nights and um, mileage and gas and meals and all that stuff, you know, and, and maybe it's only $400 or $300, but you have to do that 25 times or, you know, it's, there's no such thing as a cheap champion. <laughs> and ho- like we talk about hotels, hotels. I remember when I worked for Gary, 29 bucks was our hotel. I know it was okay. You can't 150. You're lucky to get a room anywhere. You know, if you can get one that allows dogs. Yeah. And a lot of owner handlers, uh, they don't want to leave their one dog in the car by themselves or in the van by themselves. It's, you know, it's, I think it's something, I don't know how you solve it, by the way. I have no idea, but I do know that attracting people and keeping people are two separate issues that really need to get more attention on the keeping them side. Right. And I think owner handler groups help that. They give you something to strive for. I think the grands and those titles that we've been doing at UKC forever. um, I think those titles are, are well adapted to trying to keep people coming back. But yeah, I'm, I don't know how you do it. It's just uh, an expensive sport. Uh, Definitely an expensive sport. Yeah. So like, you, I, that's I teach that in my class how expensive the sport is. So make sure you're ready to go in there and show your dog the best you can. Don't go yeah. in there and train your dog because you're paying money to train your dog. So. And by the way, if you're new, you've got to buy a new grooming table, a new crate, a new tack box, all that gear. Oh, you've got to buy the dog too. And then there's vet bills, which can get really curvy. So all of a sudden you're 30 grand, you're, you're a young couple and you're 30 grand in to your couch dog who now has a championship title. It's, it's tough uh, can, yeah. maintaining those people, keeping them support. Now, you, what your hope is they get another dog and they keep interested. But if you have to be, I don't know. One thing you have to do is make it worth their while. And Kalamazoo Weekend does that. They have other things for them to do. They have, you can bring your kid and get the peewee thing. And there's so many things that you can do. So, I mean, they have to feel welcomed too. Like that kind of, those kind of uh, activities make them feel welcome. So they need to yep. feel welcome. Why, why waste their money? Mm-hmm. I had another reason uh, to go to Cal. Well, it's also close and it's a dog show. But friends of mine were interested in the dog show. Oh. Uh, and I, and I, I met them there. And they had never been to a dog show. And they've only watched them on TV. They both had a Shih Tzu and they love their dogs. Uh, one is my financial advisor's wife, who's a brilliant <laughs> advisor herself and a real genius in stock options. She keeps her dog on her desk at all times. And it's just a wonderful dog, you know, wonderful. Uh, Sparky is now 15 and going strong, but she wanted to meet me there. And because I introduced her to Luke, who was there, and because Luke and Diane were so kind to her and let her take pictures with the dog, with Comet and, and number one dog, I think, all breeds and all those things, they were hooked. Everybody, and I introduced them to everybody, and everybody was so kind to them and so helpful in answering silly questions, to us silly right. questions maybe, right? But, um, and some good questions too. So we left... And we spent the whole day and they were thrilled when Luke won the group with Comet. They went, it, they went in the ring, Will. <laughs> <laughs> they went in the ring going, congratulations, we knew you. Were like, okay, you have to come back here. You have to come back. That's how enthusiastic they were. That's great. So I get home and I get a text from Lynn saying, we bought a puppy from Luke. I'm like, when did this transpire? We walked out together. She said, I texted him and we left and we talked and Luke was so kind and able to hook her up. So um, that's great. yeah, it's just terrific. And now I've been getting lots of pictures of the puppy playing in, in repose. It's beautiful, of course, uh, but they're, they're hooked. And hopefully that'll be a family that continues and they have kids that are interested in the dogs too. So you never know, you know, yeah. but it was that 
it was the way that everybody was kind and nice and patient with them. And um, That's yeah, because so just... for a while there we were getting very elitist and nobody wanted to still come. Are. To shows. Still well, are. Still, I'm sure there are still episodes and whatnot, mm-hmm. but there is some welcoming people. I I see it up here. People sitting down beside somebody at ringside, and I can see them discussing breeds with somebody mm-hmm. new. You know, it's yeah. It's, it's, it's good to see. And, you know, and on the other hand, it didn't hurt to have somebody who's been in the sport showing them around. You would right. hope that those people pay them the same uh, amount of time and respect if they're just walking off the street with a stroller. Uh, you know, I know no one likes it, but uh, if you tell them, please don't pet it now, but come around later. Or, you know, if you're polite, instead of saying, get your hands off my dog with that cotton candy kit. Um, get your candy you know, floss hands off yeah. my dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know, It'll help. It'll help. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Do we have 100, 100 dog and 200 dog shows because we're elitist? Because we have too many? Because only handlers go to those shows, all trying to steal one that they didn't know the other handler was coming to, which happens, right? <laughs> I had another thing. Well, I, had, I had a great friend from the West Coast fly in with a dog to show in Kalamazoo. And what an eye-opening experience. They're like, I had no idea how deep the quality was in the Midwest. Like, yeah. Uh, right now, most of the top dogs are here. And then, of course, the East Coast, too. Those are the two places that are hot right now and have been for a long time. Yeah. But if you're going to think you're going to sneak off to Indiana, because um, it doesn't sound all that imp- as impressive as Connecticut, you're in for a surprise. <laughs> you're in for a surprise. So, um, yeah, Canada great. had a surprise last week. Really? Canadian dog show scene. Yeah. Uh, we had a show in uh, Lindsay, the Georgina Kennel Club. And uh, it's a nice show. Nice. It was, it's an average, not a big show. But we had a surprise visitor. We had Winston, the French Bulldog. Really? Yeah. He wow. Came how cool. Classes because they wanted to finish his championship up in Canada. And, 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 and uh, yeah, he, uh, he, uh, let it, he, his presence was felt. He won all three groups and two best in the shows. <laughs> well, I'm glad he he was able to pull pull one off there, Willie, because you never know how that happens, right? Oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was fun. It was good to see him. It was a beauty. He's a obviously he's a beautiful dog, but it's just yeah. fun to see that a dog like yeah. that show up at one of our shows. And, mm-hmm. and you know, Did Perry right come away, up with people him? are like, "Oh my God, what, what's he doing here?" And then we found out he's just here to finish his championship. And yeah. uh, Did it. Perry show him? No, no, he was shown by a handler in Canada, a, a young really? lady named Sydney Robinson. She has, uh, she has Wheatons with her mom, and uh, yeah, the dog looked great. She's been showing Frenchies for uh, my old client for since I retired, so she's real, real apt in that breed. So that's even cooler that yeah. you know he came in there sort of anonymously. Yeah. Uh, I'll bet it Buzz went went around quickly. Oh, for sure, but no, but it was a positive buzz. Everybody came to see him, and there was mm-hmm. you never heard anything negative about him. So that I like when you see that because people, you know, people can get oh, how did he do all that winning? Like that, that, that. But mm-hmm. you know, he looked mm-hmm. beautiful and he showed great, and he was That's rewarded right. for it. And and now he now <laughs> I'm sure everybody's happy to see his butt. You know, <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> nice to see you go. Nice to see you. Nice to see you go. <laughs> Glad you won or he'd be back, right? right. Yeah, we don't want that. <laughs> That's great. Good stuff. Um, just back to Kalamazoo for a second. The one thing I forgot to mention. They have the best darn, they have a hot breakfast, a beautiful breakfast, a beautiful lunch. It's extraordinary. And they put you up at the Radisson. The Radisson Kalamazoo is one of the best. It is always ranked the best Radisson. I think I stayed there when I judged for you. Yeah, you did. You did. It's beautiful. And you can walk right downtown, right down the, they call it the mall, but it's not just a street that has excellent restaurants. And the judges really appreciated that. Uh, They loved that they could um, have a beautiful place to relax. It was close by. They didn't have to take an hour drive to get to it. Uh, It's all close to the airport. So there wasn't a whole lot of time um, shuffling around. And taking care of your judges is a big deal because they tell other judges. Yeah, for sure. And they also are more ready and relaxed when they judge. So, um, yeah, shout out to taking care of your judges well. I think that was a good example of it. <laughs> I remember you know, I went to this little show up north and uh, Jim Reynolds was on the panel and it was in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, where do you guys stay here? And he, he, he 
told me where it was. And I said, I, I drove by it the next morning on the way to the show. And all it was was a bunch of motorcycles. So when I saw him in the ring, I said, well, which motorcycle was yours? <laughs> he, he gave me a, a, a response that I'm not allowed to use. <laughs> yeah, I could say that. <laughs> that's great. Oh, that's great. Well, we had, we missed Jim last weekend at Fort Wayne. He couldn't make it. And uh, his presence was missed, of course. Yeah. So many good personalities in the sport that you just get to know and love over the years and can't wait to see them uh, win, lose, or draw. You know, it's fun, Will. When I get to those shows where I'm not judging, you have to be careful of where you go and who you talk to. If you're seen talking to a handler or an exhibitor for 10 minutes, all of a sudden, you mm -hmm. anyway. That's why he won three weeks ago. Right. Oh, I don't want to go to this next show because they're going to be there. Mm, how about I've known them for 50 years? Right. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> it's it's so hard. And up here, I forget what year we instituted that you the judges weren't allowed to speak to exhibitors. It just, it, it kind of changes everything. It changes mm -hmm. both education levels on both parts. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because I, I, if you were judging, I'd like to ask you about something and, and tell you what you did wrong and didn't put me up. But, <laughs> but if, if I mean, if if it's it, when I when I was a kid, like Joe Fagel, I would never have got to meet Joe Fagel now, probably, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I did, and I treasure the moments I spent with Joe Fagel now. And it's fun that someone that you respect and know very well to talk about their dog or even the competition's dog in a positive way, right? And. And if they ever start to say anything about, well, I don't like that. I'm like, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> we don't go there. We'll talk about positive traits. And you can learn. You can both learn. Yeah. Sure. Um, I had a handler come out of the ring a couple weekends ago with a dog that I'd not done for previously. And I did that day. And she said, I know you don't love him. And uh, and she suggested why I didn't. And she was correct. You know, and I said, well, today was the best one, but you're right in your assessment. That's exactly what I'm seeing. And uh, she said, well, a lot of people don't see that, but I knew you would. It's a thing that hangs, that I'm hung up on in that breed. It was a good discussion. Brief, two seconds, but she understood. I understood everybody was happy. Um, nothing wrong with that, Will. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. I learned if we're so here to learn. As, I learned so much as a youngster being at dog shows and sitting and talking to the likes of Mrs. Forsythe. And my, like, uh, education I never would have gotten if, I, if I'd been pushed away because I'm not allowed to talk to them, you know? Right. Now, on the other hand, when you go to a show and you're not judging, you do get collared a little bit. Once yeah. in a while, you get someone, hey, <laughs> you remember me? Mm, not really. Remember my dog? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't actually. <laughs> We're good friends. <laughs> yeah. Hey, pal. <laughs> yeah, that happens too. Hey, we got some big ones coming up. And what a number announced yesterday, eh? Oh, did they announce it yesterday? I didn't see it. Yeah. Over 5,700 entries. 5,700 plus. I can land. change a few things at the end of the year. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. it sure can. If you win all four, that's 20,000 points. Uh, that can shock. That can really move some positions around. Yeah. Really move some positions around. And if you lose the breed every day, that can too. Um, if someone just catches up and catches a couple of groups. We I mean, get a group placement um, when, the, when there's 5,700 dogs. It's like winning 10 groups. Some best in shows. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, that would be a big best in show. Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's it's going to be interesting. The only thing about that show that always disappoints me is there are no spectators. Now, there's no room for them. <laughs> but it's such a big spread out building. There could be. Um, right. But Meet the Breeds is very sparse. And a lot of the things they do are very sparse, but it's a great place for the, for the family of the sport to get together. And you see people you just don't get to see the rest of the year or you haven't seen in a while. Great opportunity to learn. The seminars are extraordinary. The AKC and the DJA do an amazing job of putting those seminars together. So lots to go for, but um, man, I can't even, I can't even imagine when they gave me my assignment, I thought that's not a lot of breeds each day. And then I looked at the numbers and I thought, I hope you know, it's going to be all three breeds could take you all day. So it'll well, be fun. That'll be fun. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. And we've got some, you know, I don't they have a do huge that. junior handling competition there too. Yeah, they do. And the breeder, the, um, 
is National Owner Handler Series, NOHS, I think that's what it's called. Um, that's a giant prize there. That's the big, that's the big thing. Oh. That's the culmination of that. And that's the big award and the big check and all that stuff. So um that was that was um yeah, it's good. It's fun to watch that too. You got a lot going on. You got the puppy groups going on over here, you got the bread by group or the owner handler groups and the real groups, and there's plenty to see. It's isn't almost that, isn't, isn't one day right all just for juniors too, I think. I don't know. I know one day is all specialties. So the the all breeds on the specialty day. I can't remember. Maybe they do. Maybe they do. Um, The all breeds are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday specialties, and maybe juniors. And then Saturday is the AKC show, which leaves you a day to get home. But again, if you're an owner handler and you've been invited to show in the owner handler series, what's that going to cost you to show up? No, for sure. You're there. Unless you're from Orlando. Unless you happen to be from Orlando, you've got to get there. Um, you've got to stay there. And it's not an expense to stay in Orlando. Um, and you've got to pay your entry fees and find a place to park and set up and all that Eat. good stuff. Yeah, eating was eating's required. Yeah. So forge around. <laughs> yeah. I have some friends that forge around though from setup to setup. <laughs> yes, of course they do. <laughs> I had to forge, over here. <laughs> I had to forge around when I got to Kalamazoo because we we've had some, you know, it's been a little stressful around the Cavanaugh household with with uh doctors and things lately, uh Cheryl and I. Um and I got to the show a little stressed out, a little, little not hydrated enough. And I realized that my, I had chapped lips or as I often say, chipped laps by mistake. I don't know why. Anyway, Dogs are bag so food. I had, I had to go foraging uh, in the grooming area for Vaseline. <laughs> oh, oh, my the first one I opened up had black dye in the Vaseline. I thought, Mom, I can use that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's so the nose doesn't go off completely. Yeah, you know? That's right. We don't want to do that. <laughs> and rather than lick the Vaseline off, then lick the nose. Yeah. yeah. So I had to go grease up so I could. Uh, yeah, it was tough. It was tough, but all's well. All's well. Um, where you had next, bud? Um, this week, actually tomorrow, I'm leaving for North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm doing a seminar for the, the Golden Retriever Club there. Uh, two days. It'll be a lot of fun. I, I guess it's a packed house. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, yeah. That'll be fun. Where in North Carolina? Charlotte. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. yeah you like that. It's you can go see a when did we go see? We saw a hockey game there, Brody and I. Oh, the checkers, the uh Charlotte Checkers, the it was it was the Carolina Hurricanes uh a ACHL AHL team, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Well, I used to yeah. I mean, we used to be able to go see the, the the hurricanes when we were in Raleigh, but I think they moved since, haven't they? I can't remember. No, no, the hurricanes They're are still, still in Raleigh? Raleigh. Oh yeah, yeah. And I probably got the name of the team wrong in Charlotte, so don't hate me, but uh it's something about Charlotte, and it probably has something to do with the storm too. If it's, if it's the hurricane, yeah, I don't remember, but they wore red. I know that, and it was great fun. And we got to see behind the scenes. My nephew came. We had a great time. So yeah, well, that's all- I should have fun. It'll be a great time. Um, I'm looking forward to it, and I've been doing my homework, getting ready for it as usual. So yeah, and this is your handling seminar, right? Handling seminar, yeah. How you doing on your uh, new breeds? Oh, good. I have to. I've got to send him. I've sent him my approval now for the the top half of hounds, the second half of hounds. Um, yeah. So I, once I get approval for the first half, then I'll I'll get to write the test for the second half. So, yeah. so six months left, two groups, eh? Yeah, six, no, about six hours. About six hours, I'll have. You know, <laughs> uh, I just started yesterday, and I've got this my green group one and half two, and hopefully by noon today, I should have <laughs> working on group three. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just so jealous i can't stand it it's the been, article... it takes you a year to get half a group in canada so oh. half well, a group a year well then you're you just started so had never yeah. mind yeah well it's been half a group a year it's been that long since i started so, so four years you get two groups yeah. Well, yeah four years here you get 12 breeds uh, it depends but, who you are hey you that the article that i wrote about that was in the chronicle last month and it got a lot more play than I thought. Um, all positive. Um, a lot of Canadians were were supportive. Um, yeah, there, you know, there are, we all know there are judges in both countries who got through a different system. But the biggest point I wanted to make in that article 
is that, and I think they made it a pull quote of some sort, uh, the system, the approval system in your country does not make you a good or bad judge or a better or worse judge than the approval system in another country. Because if you don't have an eye for a dog and an eye for balance, it doesn't matter how many credits and CUs and, no, exactly. and you know, fluff and nutters and whatever the hell else you need in boxes. Oh, I like fluff and nutters. Do. Uh, I do like fluff and nutters. Yeah. But you, where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, it, it, yes, there's more, op- more educational opportunities at the AKC than probably anywhere in the world. And it does make for some great judges. I'm not arguing that. But Jim Reynolds didn't need it. Um, you know, so there, there are people that live in a country that have uh, easier systems that can be excellent judges if they have the background, the foundation. You know, if well, yeah, it's not off the street, takes the test. Individual thing, right? Right. We happen I can to take have a seen course in hockey as Wayne Gretzky, and I'm not going to be Wayne Gretzky. So. Well, that's for sure. But uh, yeah. you don't have the. Uh, the skates will. The I have skates, skates. Are probably old. Are they old? Are they real old? <laughs> yeah, he was... old now. <laughs> probably as old as Wayne's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably as old as Wayne. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, it's it's one of those things that um, you know, it just makes you think and wonder. Uh I, I don't particularly think well, I know for sure we have more good judges than you do, uh, because we have more judges. You know, we have more great breeders than you do because we have more great breeders. That does not mean you don't have great breeders and great judges. It also means, though, for sure, that the judges that haven't, that don't have the eye or the background that went through an easier system like the CKC system can really be lost when they get down here in a big entry with lots of with lots of breed entries. Oh, and no they but shouldn't take it all over side. the world. Though. You'll, we'll get a yeah. judge from, you know, South America, this oh, that sure. walked in, they've never seen that many tollers before, and they're mm-hmm. like, Whoop. Now, what do I do? Yeah. yeah, and if you're a judge in that situation, I don't know if you want to go brag and say you're coming down to judge a big show in America and then get here and stumble. Be prepared, yeah, uh, you know. And if you're not ready yet, don't take it. No, uh, and, and you know, I, I, I told you, I spoke with Michael this week, and we talked about the judges make mistakes, but you still have you, you make a mistake and you realize it afterwards. But you you need to make a decision when you're out there, right? And then go driving home. You you get to rethink things and mm-hmm. think maybe I maybe I should have switched those two. But at the moment, I didn't. So I think good judges. Well, I know all good judges do that. Will, but it's the judge that isn't prepared who doesn't have an eye for a dog. They don't even know they made a mistake. Right. If you don't have a basic foundation and an eye for a dog, and the eye for a dog thing isn't some trite expression. It's damn important, and it's a natural it thing, though. It's not something yeah. that you, it's not you. You you can learn all the standards. You can learn all the history, but you, you can't learn to have an eye for a dog. Right. You can get yourself better and not make any mistakes. But I think it's a natural thing. I think that I'm not know. even sure you can make yourself better <laughs> if you don't have you don't have it. You can but make, like you talked about. I think it was you who was telling me about going to a cattle show with Mrs. Clark. Yeah, well, she picked out the winners right away. Of course, not a problem you know but uh, it's 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 having that eye she didn't study yeah. cattle well she did actually no. but i mean yeah. it's having that eye mm-hmm. yeah it's a matter of and there's no test for an eye for a dog there's no test for balance there's no test for decision making like you said will right i think that's an important part of it do we make yeah i made a mistake uh two weeks ago one that i'll drive home with man and it wasn't in the breed people were expecting to make a mistake in um, in my mind, I did. But the dog that I put up is very well. Um, uh, he's he's done real well. But um, it's a breed that I feel very comfortable with. But I, and I think we might have mentioned this last week. I had one that had extraordinary breed type and one that was great on its legs. And they weren't necessarily they didn't look anything like. I didn't care. One got the breed and one got opposite. And you could say, well, you know. They don't look alike. How could you do that? Because they were the best ones of their gender, in my opinion. On right. that day. And, and they don't realize what else we're looking at in the rings. So right. you know, yeah. sometimes you can't stay consistent because the consistency is just not there. Yeah. You can just yeah. sort them out. 
but it's a it's a retriever breed that I'm talking about. And when I look down the line, one had an amazing retriever shape, uh, but didn't go anywhere. So are you, you know, those are decisions you have to make in your head. And you have to be on, like we always talk about, do what you want to do. I can go home and rethink it. But at the end of the day, that's what I did. And I wouldn't change it necessarily. I wouldn't change it. But at least I'm thinking about it. And right. it makes me right. think for the next time, you know, for the next time in any breed, how am I going to handle that situation? Uh, it's just, you know, they walk the ring and turn around. You go, oh. um, yeah, I wouldn't change it. But I wanted to, but I thought about it. And right. I it's still hard. Think. We we have two and a bit minutes out there, Wayne. It's hard. Like mm -hmm. like I said, yeah. we've talked about it before. Like the person sitting at ringside could stare at the fluff or nutter for 20 minutes and figure out that fluff or nutter is probably the best one. Well, we mm -hmm. don't have time to stare at it for 20 minutes and wait for it to or beg for it to look good for us. You know, right. we, we we can't beg dogs to do what we, we need them to do. So mm -hmm. and you also can't make that coin toss by the fact the the dog that I gave the breed to is a giant winner in the breed. Um, I didn't care about that. That wasn't my, so some people would sit and go, ah, I took the easy way out. He put the top winning dog up. And it's not how it worked in my yeah, head. Top winning dogs are top winning dogs for a reason. And even if it's like, you'll often look at, you'll see an up and coming young dog and you'll know it's competition with the number one dog, but it's not ready to beat that number one dog yet. Right. <laughs> Like even if all the pieces are there, it still might not be mentally ready to beat that. There's got to be a total package. There's yeah, it does. Package. Now, sometimes when you said um, there's a reason that they do all that winning, unfortunately, once in a while, that reason is because they have the most ads, the most money, the most powerful owners. Oh, of course, that, that always. But comes still, they, they even still have to have a little. They're not complete bums. Yeah. If they're yeah. gonna, if they're gonna win twenty best in shows. They're not complete bums. There's no not way they are. Yeah, you know, exactly. unless someone's might done have... some kind of an experiment on us and trying to prove how how in, how advertising influences us, and you know, this dog is a bum, but we're going to make it a star anyway just to prove that doesn't happen. No, it doesn't happen. But what does happen is uh, insecure judges lean that way too often. Oh, for sure. And that's they how you get a big record. Things. Yeah, that's how you get a big record. I'm not saying they're bums, but maybe they shouldn't have 700 best in shows. Maybe yeah. they should have seven. <laughs> Right, but, but yeah. seven is still an accomplishment as far as I know as a show dog. That's a Absolutely. hell of an accomplishment. And uh we've talked about this before. Some of the great dogs we remember weren't even big winners, we just remember them. Right. And that's uh, that's that's the great. important part. Like I, I records are fine and best in shows are fine. And you know what? It's it's more important to the team that's doing it than mm -hmm. actually in the whole re the whole grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. Because I had an English setter years ago that I showed and she ended up I think number two. You know how many people thought she was number one just because they loved her so much? <laughs> and the same with same with Miss P. You know how many times I come people, oh, she must have been number one dog in Canada. No, she wasn't. She yeah. was number one mm -hmm. dog in Canada. Mm -hmm. But they remember yeah. her because she was memorable. And that's I think that's the main thing, you know. Yeah. No, there's no doubt. And we we see it time and time again. But you know, you've it's a different sport than it used to be. And people love running for those things. There was a dog out here not too long ago that i thought man you're spent you're i'm looking at the stats and going man you're you're really you're not even close to being number one in your group um you there's no even if you win four best in shows in orlando you're not going to change that position but they want to stay in the top 10 or top whatever it was top 20 all breeds i'm like man i can't even name number one never mind number 10 it's yeah. it's it's a fleeting glorious fleeting at that point and and, yeah. and like i said i think it's it ends up being more important to the team that's doing it hell yeah my fluffer nutter has 200 best in shows well mm -hmm. that's great well know. that's you know we there's i've written 20 papers on this over the years and essays but when it comes down to how many shows do you think you know, do you think any dog should win 200 groups in one year if so, that's a lot of campaigning and ads. But if so, what's happening to get back to the owner handler? They're never going to get to win that, you know, no, as long no, as they, that. They have to give up their life to to, yeah. to even try to do that, right? You know. So do you um, limit the you do deal? I have always liked the well. There's a million ways you can do this. One is if the magazines would say, "That's fine. You can get as many shows as you want. We're going to count the top 100," or yeah. 
you know, you can only, only a hundred show, you pick them, but only a hundred shows count toward your points or whatever the hell they do. I don't know. But that's the line to say. It's, that's yeah, just unrealistic. It's, it's too complicated to do yeah, anything. Unrealistic. Like uh, so there's lots that's of people. Stats, I just think you have to keep things in perspective. Yeah, like I, like, like you said, how there, there's 20,000 points or plus available in Florida this week. Well, can you imagine how a hot young dog came in there and it's not inconceivable that let's, let's say Mrs. Clark was judging the first day and she finds this hot young Bouvier dog and, and everybody sees it now because Mrs. Clark awarded it and it wins all of them. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> less likely these days, but it still can happen. Know, but it used to happen at the garden. It used to yeah, not inconceivable at all. We, uh, we our biggest show of the year used to be years ago, in the in the mid eighties, late eighties was the Credit Valley Dog Show. It was our biggest dog show of the year. It was held at exhibition grounds in Toronto or the Sky Dome, mm -hmm. and we had dogs show up for the weekend that ended up being top in their breed because they dominated over the weekend. Yeah, and you think, oh my God, you work all year long, and all of a sudden a dog walks in there and gets hot and takes those best in shows from everybody. I, I I hate to see it. There's a story about an Irish setter that did that. It happens to be a dog I showed, but he came out of nowhere. He was a, a winner the year before. We said, oh, let's bring him out and the year. Well, he won those best shows and he knocked a bunch of people off. And it was sure it was fun, but I was it was just fun to see that he could still be recognized after being yeah. gone for so long. Yeah. But, There's no rules written about when and how long you can show them. I think you feel it and you know it. Oh, for you sure. also, but once in a while, people need a tap on the shoulder going, you know what? That's too many years. Yeah, time to it's cut the line. That's what Bob Gillen used to say to me. Time to cut the line, William. Let them yeah. go, you know? Yeah, he's right. What do we do about judges that, boy, I didn't plan on talking about this, that have reached a point in their <laughs> This is the show, Jerry. This is how it happens. <laughs> <laughs> where it's time to cut the line for the judge. Yeah. It's so sad. But we see them. Uh, they're great dog people, but they're just to the point now where they're they're maybe not sharp enough physically or mentally to do the job they used to do so well. Well, and, and, and let's see, when you start declining like that and you're out there all day long judging 175 mm -hmm. dogs. Yeah, after traveling and two it's, times. It's tiring on, a, even on us young whippersnappers, yeah. when it's tiring yeah. on us, it is. you know, where yeah, we're wearing is. down by the end mm -hmm. of the day. I had a judge ask me once at lunch, he said, how do I know when it's time to stop? And I thought, that's a really good question. It is. Who's going to tell you? And he, you know, he said, people can sit out here and observe and go, wow, they've lost it. But we don't know we've lost it. Who's going to tell me? Exactly. And in his case, I said, your son will tell you, who was also a dog person. And I said, but you need to have that conversation with him and say, Hey, son, you let me know when it's time. Right. Because um, yeah. the AKC can't do it. Everybody expects them to do it. Excuse and, me. Pardon me. You're too old. You can't do it. Not just too old. It could be any age, right? It could be anything, right? And, it, yeah. and it, sometimes it's not fair because you're afraid to insult somebody. Yeah. Um, especially someone that's been so prominent in the sport. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's hard to tell them. Um I think it's up to a family member. That doesn't mean a blood family member. I mean, like, right. if you see me and I'm failing, Wayne, I mean, you should call Will up and say, well, you know, and I back the Suburban up and open the trunk up and say, well, we're going to the park and I'll jump in back yeah. to the Suburban <laughs> and we'll get somewhere. Like, this isn't the park. <laughs> you look to me, Wayne. <laughs> yeah, this is the Sunset Lodge. This is the departure <laughs> lounge. This is not... <laughs> this is not what I intended as a park, but well, I know it's, you know, it's a, it's a tough call though. But when you think about our aging population of judges, it's, it's going to become more. We of are a green sport. Very much so. Question. So when you look at a judging panel now, as compared to 40 years ago, because we need the four and five group judges, it takes a long time to do that in America. You're going to be older. And we, and, and not only that, we have and three spry Canadians are going to jump right down there. Exactly, <laughs> <laughs> especially in the snow. They can judge great in the snow because oh, we're just we our our, our environment keeps us tough mm -hmm. and healthy. The igloos. I can't believe you guys are still living in igloos. You you have a nice size igloo. Some people have the I the do. two person igloo. 
some person, you know, some people. Oh, are, I, got it. You know, I noticed a little when the sun was beaming through, so I got to go out and cut some more ice and pack it a little better. Yeah, I would do that. And have the reindeer just and the moose just stand around to give yeah. off some body heat. There you, where do you put you put your sleigh? You have a garage for your sleigh? Or is that so? No, no, you just tie it out front with the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> just take them out front. <laughs> you throw some raw walrus, walrus meat at them. Walrus meat. Jeez. Oh, all right good. we're going off the rails now yeah man. we are we're always off i the did rails. want to talk about one thing though before we do end up going off the rails now in in america your your junior handling judges are licensed they have to go through a test and they get licensed to become a junior handling judge up here in canada we don't and i understand that because it's hard to to to, to our population again gets in the way so we'll be at a dog show and they'll say like i get asked quite a bit will can you judge junior handling and i will if i can but sometimes they get to the point where they have to pick somebody that might not be the best to, to judge the junior handling i really do think i had talked about this before i, I think there should be a class like a seminar that that week like we have a judges 101 that we have to go to and and spend the weekend there and then be ready mm -hmm. to advance in our judging program i think they should do that for junior i think someone should put on a seminar where they they have to say they they attended this seminar before they are allowed to judge junior handling because mm -hmm. sometimes and that's by no fault of their own but they it's just lack of experience but sometimes they're teaching these kids the things they don't they shouldn't be teaching them yeah yeah i think that's absolutely true and then these kids work too hard at it right. to not to be discounted like that no the kid AKC needs to go show me it. a t well i'm not going to show you a t okay that's not going to happen in the real world where our exactly. Mel melbourne down is going to say go oh, show me a t yeah right it's <laughs> not going to happen <laughs> where are you from michigan form an m out there would you just i want to see an m a capital m not the little m with the stem i want the big m i want no, you no. bouncing back and forth confusing your dog completely at least when donald used to say donald boost when you say show me an l and you don't have to change hands at oh. least he said that to us you really? don't have to change hands he well, you can never i'm not the... sure why he chose the l but he used to use it a lot show me that yeah. l and you don't have to change hands oh, right. i'd say get the l out of there will that's what i'd say <laughs> that's what i'd say will. oh boy dad joke anyway um well i'm getting ready for orlando uh which means uh dry cleaning for five days right yeah and uh the hotels the dry, you know, all that stuff and uh i i also have to be prepared that Anne marie is going to go to disney there's no doubt that Anne marie's going to be, if Anne marie kubas is anywhere near orlando she's going to disney i think she's actually oh, got yeah. a job yeah. there as a character next year i'm well, pretty karen sure and sam do it all the time too yes they do karen, karen and sam, sam do too there's quite a few they, they people always just, go there they just love going down there and seeing Mickey. I'm not. I'm not one of those guys. Will. No, Mickey still kind of weirds me out. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm afraid of Mickey, quite frankly. Um, I did a show down there called Pittsburgh USA with Brian Leary from. I think I might have mentioned this from that she was the chick cop in Chips. That's oh yeah, called. yeah. Um, and that was I had to live. <laughs> I had to live at Disney for I don't know a couple of weeks and film them all. It was uh, yeah. It was it was fun going with the kids when they yeah. were old enough to not um you don't want to spend that money if they don't remember it will you don't want to take them when they're two and they don't remember a damn thing about the nine thousand dollar ticket you bought them to get in the and summer. when they're two and this six foot mouse walks up right. to them what do they what is their reaction <laughs> usually same re I'm, I'm weirded out so if they're gonna be a two-year-old weirded out of course they're weirded out exactly here comes goofy <laughs> ah! hey, everybody <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah gotta be age so i'm not gonna do that while i'm down there i won't have time uh you know and you know they have all those dinners and stuff well, i got invited to some dinner in new york uh this weekend and i felt really bad saying no <laughs> we can get you tickets i i'm really sorry but i don't do those anymore yeah. i don't care don't about realize, the awards unless they're over by 8 30 <laughs> i don't want to go <laughs> Can I be in bed by 8.45? That's yeah, my goal. Exactly. The middle of the night is 11 o'clock. We all know that now. <laughs> we, love, we love live music. But around here, if it's, you know, sometimes, oh, Lyle Lovett's playing once it starts, 10 at night. Are you kidding me? There's no way in hell. It's going to keep me awake. I'll be calling the police. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it starts at 8. Yeah, the opening band's two hours, and then we get to see Lyle Lovett at 10 o'clock. No, we're not doing yeah. that. 
but uh, yeah. Well, when I went to Las to Vegas me. last year with with Jill, we were scheduled to see Aerosmith, and I was so excited to see Aerosmith. Um, they didn't start till nine o'clock. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> yeah. it, it ended up okay because they canceled because I'm sure one of them got tired. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that, that whole nine o'clock start was worrying me. I was going to start napping in the afternoon, <laughs> so I'm ready, still kind of awake, so I can see Aerosmith. Yeah. Uh, I mean, music stores don't open until 11 o'clock in the morning for a reason. Musicians stay out late. That doesn't mean I have to stay out late to watch them. But uh, yeah, no. yeah, this is where pretty soon, Will, we're going to be living in the villages talking about our pills. What are yeah. you taking over there, Will? How many? You got the Tuesday pills. You got the thing with all the little things and you put in tink, 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 and you open them up on the different days. No, no it's not going to happen. I already have those, Wayne. I already I have those. But we don't talk about them. <laughs> There'll be a point when we sit on the bench and only talk about them. Uh, that and you know that and our great grandkids or something like that. Anyway, yeah. I think we've said enough. Will. Yeah, I think it's I think it's time because I'm getting tired. <laughs> <You're napped. laughs> it's my mid morning nap time. Exactly. <laughs> All right, buddy. I'm out of um, tea, so I gotta. <laughs> well, I my I'm out of tea also, and I think I've I've been proud enough to show this before. I've got a very exclusive fancy coffee mug here. Um, oh, it's a dog. It's Snoopy. Coffee. He's and getting this shipped new up. With. Favorite coffee or tea cup. I only use it for tea. This one, and I, I I got this purely by accident. We rented a house at the Irish Center specialty, and I and and I was using this cup to distribute dog food. Oh. I had taken it from the cupboard of the lovely house we rented, and then when I got home, I still had it. I thought. That's a great tea cup. <laughs> you so, stole it. Yeah, I hate to say that I, I you uh, nicked it, bud. I did wow. by accident. The I next did. guy I gotta drink his tea in his hand like this. Yeah. That's not There's only four oh. cups in here, Mildred. Thought we paid for five. <laughs> Speaking of tea, I forgot the biggest shout out ever. I got a delayed judge's gift uh two weekends ago in Fort Wayne. Guess what they gave me, Will? Red Rose tea. Did I say it last week too? No, you didn't. I was just, but they did. They gave me red rose that's tea. That's how in tune that's we amazing. are. It's amazing. They gave We're me both red not rose tea. Pants. You know where it just... <laughs> <laughs> But that's right. How there's never been a more personalized judge's gift than red rose tea. Yeah, that was extraordinary. I, I was, uh, you know what? I I went out yesterday. And I was running low on red rose tea, so I bought more red rose tea. And as I was putting it in the cup, I thought. I better pack a baggie for this week. Take my red right. rose tea with me. Mm -hmm. How bloody old is that? <laughs> That's right. You don't want to have the Lipton. But, you know, we now have a surplus of red rose tea. Uh, we have a surplus. So if you need any, when you come down here, I got a couple boxes extra. But, uh, well, I'm you doing know, a, we're, we're doing a seminar in Kalamazoo in February, I believe. So. I'll send you home with some red rose. The, the thing we worry about up here, Will, is that in the winter, sometimes we can't. it runs out. And you go to the supermarket just for that, and all the teas are there. Big empty aisle where it says Red Rose. Can't have that. You well, gotta have backup. You used to not be able to get it in America. So when you, you well, you keep saying that, but I've been drinking. Used it, we had a commercial. And I the, think she lied. A, I think the queen a, lied. No, we had a commercial years ago when I was a kid, and it was the queen. It was a impersonator, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And she's having a cup of tea, and she's saying how lovely it is, and then she goes, "Red Rose, only available in Canada." Pity. <laughs> Really? Uh, yeah, that, that was their catchphrase back then. But now mm. they had to change it because now you can get to other places. Mm. It was so funny if you were talking about us aging. And I used to always, certain judges would fall asleep at ringside. And we have uh, we have ours in Canada as Mr. Whitney, Bob Whitney. Yeah. I used to always say, Mr. Whitney, your boss is waiting. He'd wake up, right? Well, that, that, that's pretty soon it's going to be Mr. Alexander. Your is. bus is waiting. It's going to be it me. <laughs> you know, well, I'm feeling a little bit like you resent the fact that America's got the red rose now. I'm, you know, I don't. Well, resentful. we share other things. We share all our hockey players with you now. We even share our top dogs with you. Your two biggest winning dogs, dog and bitch, are Canadian bread. We share those with you. So now you have our tea. You take a lot of our handers. I don't know if you remember my top dog speech at the, the top dog dinner down there. It was all about getting my Canadian brethren back because they're all down there now. So it's this like, is true. This is true. You know, it started with but, George Ward. But we gave you the leading score in the NHL. It didn't give them to us. We had to. We well, had you to didn't suck give us the, the year before. <laughs> <laughs> true. 
<laughs> it's true. Oh boy, yeah, I don't know. How we, do. we have teams. Austin Matthews, and he's right now he's tied for the lead, the league lead in goals, and he's American born. And it's amazing how many American born like Jack Hughes mm. for New Jersey. Mm. He's just lighting it up. I think he's hurt right now, but he was lighting it up. Yeah, and he's American born, and Quinn Hughes is the captain of the Vancouver Canucks. Jack's older brother, American born. He's he's leading the 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 league in defensive points now. He's unbelievable. Yeah. So it's a good sharing across the border. Yeah, it's a good sharing. So take our red rose. Take our hockey players. Take our dogs. (laughs) Well, I've got something. We'll trade our judging approval systems. You can have ours. We'll take yours. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine if that was the approval system up here? Oh, we man. No judges. Be nuts. No judges. Are you, what do you mean I have to have that many duck tours? Let's <laughs> have that many duck tours in Canada. <laughs> that could be an issue. It yeah. could be an issue. Anyway, all right, bud. Uh, let's wrap right, it Gary. up and get on there. <laughs> oh, I watched Seinfeld a couple nights ago thinking of you. Okay, we're done. Peace. It was... It was the licking the envelope one. Oh, well, no, George had to save some money. <laughs> the doctor tells him his fiance is dead. And he goes, hmm. <laughs> oh, I love that. Uh, Jerry, Lee, Liam and I watched it last night over dinner. <laughs> we're sorry. We're sorry. Uh, we really are going to hang up now. See uh, you, Will. All right, Wayne. Everybody else, stay safe out there on your trips to Orlando or wherever you're going, and uh, we'll see you down the road. Party on, Greg. No way. Way. Better be paying attention, Doc. Thanks for the answer. <laughs> Don't Ernie confuse this in the blooper reel. That's right. We love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put that in, Ernie. <laughs> Quit taking yourself so damn seriously. I'm full of <laughs> Some extraordinary data things that are being done around the world. Thanks, 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 Ernie. We didn't mention hockey. Isn't that unbelievable? This is good. We're going to be here in a second, Wayner. Don't lose it, Doc. Hot. Hot. Don't use that one, Doc. Don't use that one, Doc.